Hello, and I'm back again, going to do another teaching on the attributes of God, His infinite powers, and we're going to look at the Trinity, and we're going to see how um, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they all share these uh, eternal powers. Okay. Um, and today I'm going to talk about the infinity of God, or the fact that the Bible teaches that God is infinite. God is eternal. Okay, so this is the infinity or the eternality of God. And I have three pages here with scriptures. And we're just going to start getting to them. So, let's see where I'm at here. And I'll start with the Father. I don't really know a lot to say about this doctrine, but I mean, it seems pretty obvious in Scripture that God is eternal or everlasting. And I wrote that a little bit too high, so where's the eraser at? Get a little bit lower, I guess. Uh, so I definitely need to study this more. We're just going to look at these verses that show that God is eternal. You know, some people ask, why, why is hell eternal? Well, if you sin against an eternal God, then the, the punishment is eternal. Now I'm tangled up in my microphone cord. That's not good. Okay. <laughs> so, let's see that God is eternal. And look at Genesis 21, 33. Genesis 21:33 says, And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. So we see in Genesis 21:33 that God is everlasting. Okay? God never has a beginning or an ending. God created time. God created the world and everything that's in it. And that includes time. And uh, so God is outside of time. And this can kind of help us to understand how God knows all things and understands all things as well, I think. Uh, I think that the doctrine um, of the infinity of God is a really important doctrine. And thank you people who are watching me on Facebook. I hope you can hear me. I'm going to try to talk kind of loud. The lighting's not the best. And uh, the whiteboard's probably backwards. I don't know what to do about that right now. But uh, I don't know. So, let's go to the next verse. <laughs> let's look at Exodus. I'm just going to put EX314. Exodus 3.14 says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Okay? I am that I am. Oh. You know, I'm not really even sure how to interpret this exactly as uh, to show that God is eternal. But, uh, you know, he said, I am that I am. So, you know, not, not I was or I will be, but I am. Okay, so he is infinite. Psalm 90 verse 2. Psalm 92 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So again, we see he's the everlasting God. From everlasting to everlasting, he created everything. He's not bound by time. Let's look at Psalm 102, 27. Psalm 102.27 says, But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. God's years shall have no end. Isaiah 41.4 Isaiah 41.4 Says, Who hath wrought and done it? Who hath wrought and done it? Calling the generations from the beginning. 
I the Lord, the first and with the last, I am He. Okay, the first, the last. From everlasting to everlasting. Romans one twenty three. Romans one twenty three. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Okay? God is uncorruptible. I guess that ties in with the fact that God is eternal. And now let's look at another verse in Romans. Romans 16.27 Romans 16.27 says, to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Forever. To God be glory through Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 1.17. So no studying really on the subject before doing this. I'm just running through these verses and seeing what they say. 1 Timothy 1.17, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So we see eternal, immortal, invisible, and the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Eternal, immortal, invisible forever and ever. Let's look at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 6.16 Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approacheth unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Power everlasting. And we've seen that God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. He's omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is omniscient. He knows all things. He is immutable. He is unchangeable, uncorruptible, everlasting, immortal. Let's look at Revelation 4.8. Revelation 4.8 says, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And so that's just another way of saying, I believe, that Jesus or that God is everlasting. God is eternal. God is infinite. Now let's see that Jesus Jesus is eternal. And there's going to be a lot of verses for this. Jesus, the Son, the second person of the Trinity, the Triune God. Jesus is eternal. Isaiah 44, 6. Go into the Old Testament. Isaiah 44, 6 says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first... And I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So thus saith the Lord, and whenever we see Lord in the Old Testament, that is speaking of the second person of the Trinity, the Lord Jesus He is the Almighty, ever-existent One, the, the Infinite One. Let's look at 1 Timothy 1.17. 1 Timothy 1.17. 1 Timothy 1.17 1 1 says, Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be glory and glory forever and ever. Amen. And we read that one earlier, actually. Um, and then we got 1 Timothy 6.16 6, again. Um, 1 Timothy 6.16. 6, I read that one. I'm not going to read it again. We'll just skip over that. And then Revelation 1, 4 and 5 again. Uh, we read 4. Whoops. Revelation 1, 4 and 5. 
And uh, I didn't read verse 5, so I guess I'll read that. Revelation, Revelation verse 1, chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. Oh, we didn't read this one. Okay, sorry about that. I'll start over again. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins within his own blood. Okay. Revelation 1, eight. I am the alpha, I am alpha and omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I think that's a great verse to show that Jesus is eternal when he says he is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the ending. And, you know, we've seen that same kind of language, uh, you know, the same idea being used in the Old Testament over and over again for God, that God is eternal. And, um, you know, this this is a, a great way to show that Jesus is uh, God as well. People who deny Jesus is God, some of them will say that you know he didn't he didn't exist uh, before creation, you know, or that he was created. And there's so many different false views on uh, the person of Jesus, um, but we have to know that Scripture makes it pretty clear that you know he forgave sins, he was sinless, uh, you know. Uh, John says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And uh, over and over again, you know, you know, people, people worship Jesus. Um, you know, these are all things that can only be attributed to God. Okay. But let's continue. Revelation 1.11. And that will be for another study where we'll talk about the deity of Christ. But this, this all, I mean, that's what we're doing now, um, basically, in a way, but crossing over into some other doctrines as well, the, the doctrine that God is eternal. But we're also showing that Jesus is eternal and the Holy Spirit is eternal as well. And so therefore, the Holy Spirit's God, Jesus is God. Um, Revelation 11 says, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Revelation 117. There's a lot of them here in Revelation. Uh, you know, to show that Jesus is God, and to show that Jesus is eternal. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Revelation again. And there's a bunch more, there's a few more at least here. Revelation 2.8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead, and is alive. The first and the last. The beginning and the ending. Okay. The everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting. Revelation 21.6 Revelation 21, 6 says, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation 22, 13. Revelation 22, 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last. So I guess that might be one of the best ones, actually, because that's just really straightforward. That Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And, uh, which is kind of saying the same thing, like three times. Um, 
And you know, all these verses, they seem so obvious that God is eternal, that Jesus is eternal, that Jesus is God. And, but, you know, there, there are people who teach otherwise. And that'll be for another study to refute their interpretations. But, I mean, people can have different interpretations for everything. So that's why we really need to, you, you get all the scriptures together and you kind of define like what it means that God is eternal and you know, we see how their, their interpretation won't work. It doesn't, it's not, not accurate. Now let's get away from Hebrews for a bit, or Revelation and go to Hebrews. Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7.25 says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth, he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever liveth. He lives forever. He is eternal. Now let's see that Jesus uh, was preexistent to creation. And so this is, you know, again, helping us to learn that Jesus is God, that he existed before creation. Okay. He is not, he's not part of creation. He is God. And so, let me see how much space i got on the whiteboard here. I guess, uh, so I'm going to put down here, pre-existent So I hope you'll learn some things from this. This won't be the best study because I don't know a lot about this doctrine that God is eternal. I don't know how to go into real good detail about it. But at least you'll be familiarized with some verses and, and some things. So we see that Jesus was pre existent to creation. So we're going to go to the Old Testament for some of this here. Genesis one twenty six. And we'll see some of the same things in some of these verses, but Jesus 126, and God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. I hope the sound's really getting recorded this time. But, uh, okay, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So we see the words that are used there are not, not singular, okay? So this is the persons of the Godhead talking. That includes the Son. Genesis 3.22 Genesis 3.22 Come as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Okay, he's become as one of us. This is being said way back in the Garden of Eden. Okay, way before uh, Jesus existed. But Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. And so when, it, when God's speaking and he's saying us... It's talking about the persons within the Trinity. Um, and so, you know, you wonder, like, how does somebody who denies that pre Jesus pre-existed or, or they deny the Trinity, how do they interpret things like this? And they do have their interpretations. I don't know exactly what they are right now, but if you follow everything through, you'll see that the doctrine of the Trinity is the one that's the most consistent. And, I mean, we have to believe that Jesus is God. Okay, Genesis 11.7, go to, let us go down, and there confound their language. Let us go down and confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Again, we see us. Um, now we're going to go to a pretty big passage here. It's going to be Proverbs 8 and 22 through 36. Proverbs 8, 22, 36. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. Okay, I said earlier, whenever the Lord's mentioned in the Old Testament, we're talking about the Lord Jesus, the second person 
of the Trinity. When there was no depths, I was brought forth, and when there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, when I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the, in ha, and rejoicing in the habitable part of the, his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now, heart, now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for... Blessed are they that keep my ways, hear instruction, be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me, wrongeth his own soul, and they that hate me, love death. Wow, okay. Isaiah 48.12, we might have went over this one, I don't know. Did we? No? Yeah, we did. We already went over that one. Isaiah 48.12. And I believe that's just another one where it mentioned, uh, Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called, I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. Okay. The Lord speaking. Or seeing that, you know, that God is... Uh, the first and the last, and Jesus said the same thing. Isaiah forty-eight sixteen. Isaiah forty-eight sixteen. Come ye near unto me, hear ye this, and secret from the beginning, from the time that I was, there am I, and I the Lord God in the Spirit.
Reagan advised us not to have export health care to this point. The same advice for health care for all. Ever liveth, he's everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting. Now let's look at John 8, 53. John 8, 53. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Okay. Hmm. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? I don't know exactly how to interpret that one. Let's look at John 17, 5. How oh, that's... I don't know. John 17, 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Okay, so we see that the Son was existent before the world, and the Father was existent before the world. Okay. Now that's a pretty good verse. John seventeen five. John seventeen twenty four. John seventeen twenty four, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Romans eleven thirty six. Romans 11.36, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Glory forever. First Corinthians 8.6 1 Corinthians 8.6, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom... All are, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all are all things, and we by him. Okay. It says, the Father of whom are all things, and the Lord Jesus by whom are all things. They are both eternal and the Father and the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus are all one. Ephesians 3 9. Ephesians 3 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So again, the Father and the Son, they had to exist before the world. Philippians 2.5 Philippians 2.5 Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay. Not sure about that one, how that shows that Christ was pre-existent, but... Okay. Hmm... Let's look at Colossians 1, 15 through 19. Colossians 1, 15 through 19, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, for it, hath, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Wow. Okay. Again, all, by him all things were created. He is before all things. By him all things consist. That's a really good passage for this as well. Hebrews one twelve. And I know this is just probably kind of a blur, so hopefully the, the future videos will be better. I'm just writing them all out. Or it's Hebrews one two actually. 
Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, "...hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world." So we see a lot. A lot of these verses say that Christ you know, was involved in creation. Okay. And uh, he was not created. He is eternal. He has always existed. He's the Alpha and the Omega. And one more, Revelation... 3.14 Revelation 3.14 And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Okay. That doesn't mean that he was created. Now, there's, I'm only going to go over one to show that the Holy Spirit is eternal. And I've actually mentioned this one in the first one. But Hebrews um, 9.14 Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God, the eternal spirit. Okay? So, we see that God is eternal. I hope that you can see some of these verses here. Uh, I know on Facebook they're probably all backwards. But you can watch this video on YouTube. And I upload it in a little bit and you can see it, see it all better there, hopefully. But uh, the Father is eternal, everlasting. Um, he created all things. Um, and Jesus, the same. Jesus is eternal. He's infinite. And we also see that by seeing that Jesus existed. Um, he was pre-existent before creation. And we see that the Spirit is eternal in very plain words in the Bible. The eternal Spirit. So I hope you learned something from this. Not a lot of detail about going into what all this means or refuting other views or anything, but uh, I, I do think this is important doctrine. Um, really something that I need to study more. But uh, anyways, we can know that you know God, He's outside of time, and you know more powerful than we could ever imagine. Um, so I'll say prick. A quick prayer. Thanks, God, for the study. Please help us to learn more about uh, what the Bible teaches, that you are eternal, and uh, help us just to keep our mind on you, Lord, and stay focused on you, and help us throughout our day. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. This is the Gospel, the Gospel of the grace of God, the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth, took, him, took on Himself the nature of a man, he was crucified and died for our sins, and He rose again on the third day. I want to ask you the most important question of your life. Your joy or sorrow for all eternity depends on your answer to this question. Are you saved? This has nothing to do with how good you are or if you go to a building called a church. But are you born again? In John chapter 3, verse 7, Jesus said, Ye must be born again. How can you be born again? 
first of all, you must realize that you are a sinner. Sin is anything in us that does not express or is contrary to the holy nature of our Creator, God. For instance, have you ever lied or cheated or stolen? These are all contrary to the character of God. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 when it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. For the wages or the payment of sin is death. We read that in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. But God loved you so much he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Jesus had to shed his blood and die. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Although we cannot understand how, God said my sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus and he died in our place. He became our substitute. It is true, God cannot lie. God commandeth all men everywhere to repent in Acts chapter 17 verse 30. To repent means to turn around, to confess and forsake one's sins. It's a change of mind and a change of heart and a change of attitude that abhors sins. It agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees that Jesus died for us on the cross. In Acts chapter 16, verses 30 and 31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1 verse 12. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can, but shall be saved. If you would like to learn more about sin, salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ, or anything else concerning the Christian faith, please visit www.acceptgbconverted.com. Introducing new video series for YouTube channel, it is written KJB 1611. Bible Hermeneutics. Learn how to correctly interpret the Bible. Defending the Faith. Master apologetics and be prepared to answer any objections. KJV Bible Q&A. Answering various questions with the Bible. Doctrines of Devils Refuted. Refuting many false doctrines with Scripture. False Church System Exposed. Exposing the many problems within the modern church system. Go Preach, all about spreading the gospel. False Teachers Exposed, Bible teachers held accountable and named by name. KJV Defended, exposing corrupt modern Bible versions and teaching all things concerning the King James Bible. And more. Please subscribe and share. AcceptYouBeConverted.com is an anti-church system, Trinitarian, free will, eternal security, King James only, Christian Zionist, Young Earth Creation, Lordship Salvation Ministry, where you can learn sound doctrine, apologetics, hermeneutics, and more. AcceptYouBeConverted.com is mobile friendly and secure from hackers and malware with sight lock. 
Are you looking for fellowship? AcceptYouBeConverted.com is a virtual community with daily visits from men and women around the globe. Each page includes a comment section. There is a live chat feature that is available in the desktop and mobile version where you can chat with anyone on the site at any time. Join the fun on the message board, which you can access by clicking on the link on the footer or by going to acceptyoubeconverted.proboards.com. AcceptYouBeConverted.com offers MP3 Bible teaching through Sermon Audio, which you can access through the website or through SermonAudio.com or the Sermon Audio app. Just search for It Is Written AJV. If you would like to send me your prayer requests, questions, or comments, there is a contact form on the website, also my Facebook and Twitter. Feel free to contact me anytime. I would love to hear from you. Please visit today, support the ministry, share with your friends and family, share on gospel tracks, pray for the ministry, become a partner, and help spread the truth of God's word far and wide.